Good morning, everyone. My name is Ameya Gondalekar. I'm a research assist associate professor here at uh, Center for Urban and Industrial Best Management at Purdue University. Uh, thank you for attending this 87th annual Best Management Conference. I hope you have had a good conference so far. So keeping in the spirit of making this conference very informative, I'll be talking about the role of essential oils in urban and structural pest management. So here is the outline of my talk. I'll start by giving you some background information about what essential oils are. Then I'll talk about some of the limitations that we have been facing over the past two or three decades in using these essential oils for pest management purposes. In the next section, I'll talk about new examples for utilizing essential oils in different pest management scenarios. In the penultimate section of this talk, I'll be speaking about or telling you some practical tips on how to effectively utilize some of the essential oil products in your day-to-day -day offerings that you provide your customers for controlling different pests. And then I'll end my talk by giving you some take-home messages that are kind of spread out throughout this presentation. So let's first start by talking about the importance of these organic products or green products in pest management. So over the years, the public demand for organic or natural pest control or eco-friendly pest control products has been increasing. I took this slide from the State of the Natural Market Survey, a publication that appears every year in the PCT magazine. Uh, when different pest control companies were interviewed back in 2019, about one in five of them thought that they were going to include some type of green products in their product offerings. Fast forward to 2021, about 25% of the PMPs or one of four, every four PMPs think that they are going to provide some type of green products for pest management. The, I also read the report that was published earlier this year, that is the 2022 State of the Natural Products Market, and that report was also sponsored by Zoicon. They always sponsor it. And in that report, some key findings were that about 42% of the pest control companies or the PMPs that were interviewed said that they were increasing their investments in green products or infrastructure. Of the companies that they were interviewed, 34% of them said that about 34% or 35% of the residential customers were considering using green products for pest management purposes on their property. The demographic group that is most interested in using these green or natural products is the millennials, those that are born between 1981 to 1996. So as you can see, overall, the demand for green products has been growing. So my talk today is about the use of essential oils in pest management or urban pest management. But when you consider the natural products that are out there, they can be divided into three different categories. The first category is that of biopesticides. And a very good example of a biopesticide product is Apprehend, which you are likely using for bed bug control out in the field. Biopesticides usually contain some kind of bacteria, fungi or other microorganisms that are going to be toxic to insects and are going to kill them. Another group of natural or eco-friendly chemicals or green chemicals are earth minerals. And some of the products under these categories that you might, this category that you may be using are diatomaceous earth, silica, which is sold under a brand name Cymexa and some others, as well as some boric acid and boric, boric containing products. And last but not the least, the most important group of biopesticides or natural products is plant-derived essential oils. And examples of plant essential oils include thyme oil, cedar oil, rosemary oil, and there are many products containing these oils that are available in the market. So my presentation today is not going to talk about biopesticides or earth minerals. It is going to focus on the plant-derived essential oils, which are kind of shown here. Uh, and I'll introduce them to you before we start talking about their role in pest management. So plant-derived essential oils, just by saying the word plant-derived, that means they are derived or extracted from aromatic or fragrant plants through a process called steam distillation. 
because they are naturally derived from plants, they fit the definition of being organic of, or of natural origin. And also they're eco-friendly. That means they are not going to cause too much harm to the non-target organisms. Examples of these uh, essential oils include clove oil, thyme oil, cedar oil, and I'm just mentioning a few here, but there are 20 or 30 more oils that can be used for pest management purposes. Each of these oils contain a complex mixture of various chemical compounds that are volatile in nature. When I say volatile, that means they are going to vaporize easily, even at room temperature after applying them on a particular substrate in a house, uh, such as a baseboard or a bed or any other place. Because of their volatility, there is an aroma that is associated with them. Some people like that aroma, some people absolutely hate it. If you were to take any particular essential oil and analyze it on a chemistry equipment, such as the ones that you see on the NCIS chemistry or toxicology or forensic labs, then you will find that each any given essential oil is composed of hundreds, if not thousands of small chemicals. So some of these small chemicals are going to be toxic to insects and are, and are going to kill insects. So that's why we are using these essential oils for pest management purposes. Uh, so whenever you are talking with your customers and if they think that essential oils are a non-chemical way of controlling pests, that's not correct because these essential oils are composed of hundreds of different chemicals and some of them are going to be toxic to insects. So how do essential oils kill insects? First and foremost, they are going to be effective by direct contact. So if you can apply this oil, essential oil product, directly on the body of a cockroach or a bed bug, then your chances of killing it are higher, but they don't present any residual toxicity. And that is because they are highly volatile in nature or they vaporize easily at room temperature. This volatility or vaporization potential also makes them good fumigants for use in pest control. So there are some pest control products available in the market that can be essential oil-based products that can be used as fumigants to control bed bugs and some other pests. For example, this rag in a bag, met bag method of fumigation was quite popular for, for some time for bed bug control. So there was a product containing neem oil or circle, the product name was circle, and that had a rag in a bag type control uh, recommendation on its label, wherein you would put bed bug infested items in a bag, put a rag that was kind of soaked in this product, and then you would seal that bag. So as the fumes were kind of released into that bag, the bed bugs exposed to those not fumes, but vapors were getting killed. So they can be used as fumigants as well. Uh, so once these essential oils kind of enter the insect body, either in a vapor form or through direct contact with their skin, they are going to affect the normal functioning of their nervous system. That is, they are either going to fire up the activity of their nervous system or slow down its activity. To give you a comparison, uh, if you have used the Vendetta cockroach gel bait, which contains abamectin as active ingredient, or if you have used Max Force FC Select cockroach bait, which contains fipronil as active ingredient. So abamectin and fipronil are not essential oil products. They are synthetic chemical insecticides, but they are present in these cockroach baits. So these two chemicals found in these baits are going to bind to the GABA receptor found in the insect nervous system. And thymol, which is also found in thyme oil, is also going to bind to this GABA receptor. So you can see the similarity between the mode of action of synthetic chemical insecticides, such as Vendetta and Abamectin, and that of thymol. Similar to that, carbocol, which is an active component found in the essential oil or oregano oil, potentially binds the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in the insect nervous system. For example, the neonicotinoid insecticides in products such as Alpine WSG, which is a synthetic insecticide, or acetamipred, another neonic, which is present in transport, also binds to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So this kind of information would be useful when you are trying to communicate information about green products or essential oils with your customers. So let's talk about some of the brief history of essential oils. 
Essential oils are not new for pest control. In fact, they were being used in the 18th century to control body lice, some stored product pests, as well as garden pests. Beginning in about 1990s, there was an uptick in research for utilizing these plant essential oils because of their eco-friendly nature and organic origin in agricultural public health as well as, well as urban pest control. One of the reasons why many manufacturers are interested in bringing essential oil products to the market. One reason is that there is an increasing demand and also the United States Environmental Protection Agency, which kind of registers all pesticides used here in the U United States, has granted generally recognized a safe status to more than 20 different plant essential oils and their constituents. This means whenever manufacturers want to bring the essential oil product to the market, they don't have to do five or 10 years of environmental studies because these plant essential oils are already deemed as safe. So all they need to do is come up with a formulation and demonstrate the efficacy of their formulation against different urban pests and then EPA and different states will register that product. So I, am, I have been saying that uh, essential oils are eco-friendly. So why are they eco-friendly? So not only we are using essential oils in pest control, but we are also using them in perfume industry. We are consuming them uh, by using them as food flavorings, especially the oils obtained from mint family plants. Uh, people are using them in aromatherapy as well as alternative medicine. And last but not the least, some of the essential oils are also used as disinfectants. For example, uh, during the pandemic back in 2020, all the disinfectants such as Lysol or bleach kind of flew off the shelf in supermarkets. But the university needed some kind of uh, disinfectant to clean the high traffic areas, the door knobs, the light switches and countertops with some kind of a disinfectant. So they relied on this disinfectant, which contained thyme oil as an antimicrobial agent. And people have shown that thyme oil can even kind of kill the virus particles or bacteria, uh, pathogenic bacteria that could be present on substrates or surfaces. So as you can see, we can use them for pest control as well as we can use them for different other uses. So, Although these plant essential oils are so eco-friendly, they are so easy to register with the EPA, what are the limitations that are preventing their widespread use? First and foremost, I mentioned before that they vaporize easily or have high volatility under room temperature conditions. As they vaporize, they are going to give off the odor that is present, uh, that is associated with the chemicals present with them. And that odor is going to be acceptable to some people, but some people are going to hate it. For example, when I work in the lab, my students work in the lab with uh, essential oils. Uh, some students uh, complain that the lab smells like a pain bomb, which also contains some essential oils or Benagay. Uh, because of the high volatility or high vaporization potential, these essential oils don't remain on the substrate that they are applied to for a long period of time. That means they are going to kill the cockroaches, bed bugs, or ants for a short period of time until the residues are present in lethal quantities. But once they vaporize, then these essential oils are not going to provide any residual control. We are sourcing these essential oils from plants that are growing in nature. And if you were to take thyme plants or oregano plants that are growing in North America versus South America or in North America versus Europe, then the chemical composition of those plant essential oils is going to be different and that it may or may not affect the efficacy of those products. So many, whenever manufacturers are trying to obtain raw materials to get these essential oils for pest control purposes, there may be a lot of variation from batch to batch, depending upon where the plant was grown. So that is problematic from the manufacturer perspective. And also because we are trying to get these raw materials from the nature, uh, from agriculture or horticulture producers, there is a high cost associated with procuring these materials. And last but not the least, the delivery methods, the ways in which we are using these essential oils for urban pest control are evolving. So that is, uh, I have highlighted this bullet point because I'm going to tell you 
some of the new research that is being done in my lab and other labs across the country and the world in which they are finding innovative ways for using essential oils for urban pest management. So these are some of the, in the next couple slide, I'll be showing you some of the limitations associated with uh, using essential oils in a picture format uh, with some pictures. So if you can directly spray essential oils on the body of a bed bug, cockroach, or a mosquito, or even an ant, you can kill them. But the quantities that are required are very large in comparison to that of synthetic insecticides. As an example, if you want to kill bed bugs using this rosemary oil, you would have to make sure that when you are spraying, you are getting milligram quantities, which is quite a bit in terms of insecticide, uh, on the body of the bed bug. In comparison to that, if you want to kill a bed bug using this tempered FX insecticide, you would need a tiny fraction of what, uh, you know, a tiny fraction of uh, insecticide to kill that bed bug. And it's also going to show you residual efficacy. So this is one of the limitations associated with the use of essential oils. You need to use them in large quantities. Another limitation is that uh, essential oils, they vaporize easily at room temperature. And so they have fumigant uh, capabilities. They have fumigant potential or fumigant toxicity. However, the amount required to fumigate a termite infested house, for a, example, a dry wood termite or a formosan termite infested house, if you want to fumigate it with some essential oils, it would be required in unrealistic quantities. Similarly, if you want to fumigate uh, a car that is infested with uh, bed bugs with essential oil, you would need it in very high quantities to a point where it becomes very cost innovative, prohibitive. So those are some of the limitations associated with the use of essential oils on a wide, uh, on a large scale. However, uh, in the next section of this talk, I'm going to present some research that has been done in labs all over the world that focuses on finding out new ways of utilizing essential oils in pest control. And when researchers or manufacturers are looking at the limitations, current limitations associated with the use of essential oils, they are observing these limitations as opportunities for new product development or new process development. For example, the problem with high vaporization potential or volatility, uh, high odor and limited residual control can be overcome by creating new nano formulations of these plant essential oils or other formulations that are going to take care of the odor issue, the vaporization issue, as well as they are going to extend the residual life of the residues that we are spraying or the product that we are spraying in different settings. The problem associated with variable sources of plant essential oils that may affect efficacy can be solved by using standardized cropping systems across regions so that you will get a same complement of essential oil chemicals within any given oil, whether it's from Asia or Europe or North America. Since uh, it is kind of costly to get all the raw materials from the nature or from agriculture or horticulture, some of the essential oil components that are toxic to insects can be synthesized in the laboratory or mass produced in the laboratory. And that would bring down the cost that is associated with acquiring these materials from uh, the nature. There was a recent article that was published in Journal of Economic Entomology in 2022. This review paper, uh, which came from Auburn University, had summarized some of the shortcomings that I have already discussed with you. It's, it is suggesting the need for additional research to improve the utility of essential oils in urban pest management. However, this paper does not emphasize the new methods or the novel ways in which the manufacturers as well as the researchers are coming up for utilizing these essential oils in urban pest management. So in the next few slides, I'm going to give you a series of five or six examples on how researchers have been finding out new ways to use essential oils. So the first example comes to us from University of California, University of California Riverside where Dr. Chao Yang Li and Dr. Shea were doing research with dry wood termites. 
Drywood termites are not found here in the Midwestern region, but they are commonly found in California, as well as their infestations are increasing in Florida and the South. The colonies of these drywood termites, they are not kind of living in the soil. They are living in higher up in the house where they are directly infesting the beams, the wooden beams and the studs. So the best method to control these drywood termites are heat treatments. But some heat treatments are successful, some are not successful, as well as there are synthetic chemical fumigants that can be used for controlling these termites. But in the research that was published in this paper, what the researchers from California Riverside did was that they had these wooden planks that were infested with drywood termites. And on some of these planks, the researchers applied small amounts, about five to six drops of wintergreen oil, and then exposed them to heat treatments. Some of the blocks that were infested with drywood termites were not treated with this wintergreen oil, but they were directly subjected to heat treatments. At the end of the heat treatments, what they found was that the wooden planks in which uh, no essential oil was applied, there, were about, there was about 40% mortality of these drywood termites. But the wooden blocks that received winter grain oil treatment followed by heat treatments, they were getting more than 90% control or mortality of termites. So th this example shows you that maybe you, you won't be able to use essential oils by themselves for achieving satisfactory control. But if you combine them with other methods such as heat treatments, which is an IPM method, then you can get significantly higher mortality. In the next example, I'm going to talk about some of the coconut oil fatty acids, which are in fact showing better repellent activity against mosquitoes, flies, and bed bugs. And that repellent activity is better than that of DEET. So if you know, uh, most of the over-the-counter repellents that are available to apply directly on the skin or to apply on the clothing, they contain DEET as the repellent. And that has been the market standard for many years. But researchers in USDA uh, found that some of the essential oil fatty acids extracted from coconut oil were in fact showing better efficacy and long-lasting efficacy, preventing bites from mosquitoes, flies, and bed bugs. So in the future, uh, we may see a replacement with uh, these DEET-containing repellents that people or PMPs can buy from the stores with some of the repellents that contain coconut-derived fatty acids or essential oils. The next example is about using essential oils for cockroach control in a bait formulation. So essential oils are somewhat repellent by nature. So they are giving off the odors that are associated with their chemicals. And these odors are going to repel the ants or cockroaches or any other pests. So when we are using baits for cockroach control, we want the cockroaches to feed upon those baits. So we have never used essential oils uh, in cockroach baits before, but researchers in Asia came up with these new bait tablets that contain citronella oil, dill oil, along with some biodiesel plant wastes. Uh, so I'll be explaining that shortly. So they formulated citronella oil, dill oil, and some other plant based in these bait tablets, dry plate tablets, along with some sugars. And when these bait tablets were kind of tested in a laboratory setting and a field setting, it was providing more than 90% control of German cockroaches. These kind of baits are not yet uh, available in the market, maybe because this discovery is from Asia or India, they will be first manufactured in the Asian market. And eventually, if they are successful there, they may become available in the US market. So this shows you how essential oils can be even used, even though they show some repellent activity, they are still can be, they can be effectively formulated by the new technologies such as nanotechnology in these baits, and they can be effective even against German cockroaches. Another example that I'm going to talk about is from University, Rutgers University in New Jersey. And that research was done by Dr. Chang Lu Wang and Dr. Richard Cooper. Dr. Richard Cooper was a presenter in this uh, symposium. I hope you had a chance to attend his talk on bedbugs. 
So what the Rutgers study is showing us is that they were trying to control bed bugs in a high rise apartment using either essential oil based product, which is which used to be called as Eco Raider and now it is called as Eco Venger. And also they were using a synthetic chemical insecticide, which is tempered as C. So they had a set of apartments in which they just use Eco Raider, which is an essential oil based product. They had a set of apartments in which they use tempered as C, which is a synthetic insecticide. In another set of apartments, they use both the biopesticide or essential oil based pesticide as well as the synthetic pesticide. After, after about 12 weeks after initial application of these products, they found that whether they had used EcoRader only or Temperate only, which is a synthetic insecticide or a combination of both, they were still getting more than 90% reduction in bed bug counts almost 12 weeks after initial application of this, these insecticides. So here in this example, it shows you that you can use essential oil containing products for successful bed bug control, especially if you are not just relying on the pesticide. If you are using IPM techniques such as monitoring, vacuuming, steaming, as well as using mattress and casements along with some biopesticides or essential oil products, then you may get 90% or greater control, which is similar to that of synthetic pesticides. So EcoRader or EcoVenger is not the only essential oil product that is available in the market for bed bug control. In fact, between 2014 to 2019, there are many other products such as uh, bed bug patrol, orange guard, cedar side, Essentria, EcoSmart, and others that have been shown to be efficacious against bed bugs in laboratory setting. And in the field, they may have some level of efficacy against uh, different bed bug uh, populations. I would like to uh, comment here that whenever you are trying to incorporate an essential oil based pesticide in your bed bug or uh, other uh, control programs, then you may want to directly talk with the manufacturer. And the reason I'm saying this is because sometimes, because of the supply chain issues or because of lack of public or PMP demand, manufacturers sometimes discontinue the products from the market. So you don't want to kind of uh, plan on using a product and then find out that that product is not available in the market. Another example that I'm going to talk about comes from my lab. Uh, so hats off to my former PhD student, Dr. Sudeep Gaire. He did most of this work and he currently works for Zoicon or Central Life Sciences, which also has a line of essential oil-based products for urban pest control. So hopefully Sudeep will be able to do research at Zoicon and bring help them bring some products to the market for uh, urban pest management. So in this particular example, we had a population of bed bugs collected from Knoxville, Tennessee, and that population was showing 72,000 fold, which is a very high level of resistance to Delta methrin. This means that we have to use 70,000 times higher concentration of Delta methrin to achieve mortality in the Knoxville bed bugs as compared to the susceptible laboratory bed bugs. And in this paper, we showed that uh, when you combine essential oils with Delta methrin, you can overcome this resistance shown by Knoxville bed bugs to Delta methrin. And this uh, synergistic activity between Delta methrin and essential oils essentially happens by essential oils inhibiting the cytochrome P450 enzymes that are responsible for resistance. So this next slide kind of explains it even further or the next few slides, I should say. So we had an Oxwell population of bed bugs that was Delta methrin resistant. Dr. Karen Vale from Tennessee helped us collect this population. And then the resistance in this population was caused by point mutations in the bed bug nervous system that was preventing Delta methrin from binding to the bed bug nervous system and causing its lethal effects. Another important mechanism of resistance uh, to Delta methrin in this Knoxville population was that it showed increased activity of detoxification enzymes, namely cytochrome P450s. So what was happening in these Knoxville bed bugs is that as soon as Delta methrin was entering their body, these detox enzymes, cytochrome P450s were breaking down 
the delta methane insecticide into non-toxic products that the bedbugs could just uh, excrete or poop out. But when we combined, you know, instead of just applying essential oils or just delta methane to bedbugs, these Knoxville bedbugs, when we applied essential oils in combination with delta methane or Ecorator, the market product, in combination with delta methane at a lower dose directly to the bed bug body, what was happening was that at a lower dose that we were kind of applying this mixture of essential oils and delta methane, we are expecting about 50% mortality. But in reality, we are getting about 80 or 90 or higher percentage of mortality of these Knoxville bed bugs when we are applying essential oils and delta methane together. What this means is that the essential oils, when they were applied with that delta methane, they were preventing the breakdown of uh, delta methane by cytochrome P450 enzymes. So in simple terms, essential oils were enhancing the toxicity of delta methane or they were synergizing the toxicity of delta methane and they were able to overcome the resistance to delta methane that was shown by Knoxville bedbugs. I gave you too many examples in this particular slide. So on the next two slides, I'm going to show you the examples of synergism or overcoming of insecticide resistance in Knoxville bedbugs by different essential oil and pyrethroid mixtures. So in the first study, uh, we mix linalool, which is uh, one of the chemical component found in lavender, basil, rosemary, and thyme oil. We combined it with uh, delta methane at a lower dose. So when we only applied linalool to bed bugs, Knoxville bed bugs, we are getting about 30% mortality. With delta methane, we are getting about 37% uh, mortality. So collectively, we are thinking that we would get about 60 to 70% mortality with the mixture of linalool and delta methane. But in fact, we are getting more than 90% mortality. This, the, this result shows us that linalool, which is an essential oil component, is synergizing delta methane toxicity or overcoming insecticide or delta methane resistance shown by the Knoxville bed bugs. When we combine Ecorader with delta methane, we are seeing the same results. The Ecorader at a lower dose was providing 22% mortality. Delta methane was providing 25% mortality. And a combination of those two was providing about 50% mortality. Right, that was that's what we expected. They would provide 50% mortality, but in reality, they were providing more than 80% mortality. So even Ecorader was able to synergize the toxicity of delta methane or overcome the resistance shown by Knoxville bed bugs to delta methane. Uh, this com concept of plant essential oils synergizing pyrethroid toxicity or overcoming insecticide resistance has not only been observed in bed bugs, it has ob been observed with a number of agricultural pests, stored grain pests, as well as public health pests, such as mosquitoes and house flies. So we are seeing this across the board that essential oils are synergizing toxicity of pyrethroid insecticides, or they are able to overcome the resistance to pyrethroid insecticide shown by different insect species. So I would like to kind of switch gears here slightly to explain this concept of synergism. So the pyrethroid resistance shown by bed bugs, house flies, or mosquitoes is not new. In fact, since about 1980s or 1990s, we know that uh, different species of mosquitoes, house flies, or even cockroaches can show pyrethroid resistance that is caused by overexpression of, of cytochrome P450 enzymes. So to overcome this resistance, what the manufacturers are doing is that they are mixing these synthetic synergies such as PBO or piperonyl butoxide or MGK264 in the products that they are offering. These insecticide synergies, what they are doing is that they are inhibiting the cytochrome P450s overexpressed by resistance insects. And when you inhibit or block these cytochrome P450 enzymes in resistance insect, then you can get a synergistic increase in toxicity. To give you some examples, if you have used the bedbug product Crossfire, it contains pyrethroids, 
different uh, neonicotinoids as well as some other compounds, but it also contains 10% PBO or piperonyl butoxide, which is present to overcome resistance or metabolic resistance shown by different bed bugs. Similarly, the aerosol product or the clean out product CP80, in addition to pyrethrins, it also contains 4% PBO or piperonyl butoxide, which is present in there so that it can be effective even against resistant populations of different urban pests. So similar to these synergies, what our research has been, uh, what we have been finding in the lab, that similar to the chemical or commercial synergies such as PBO and MGK264, certain essential oils can also inhibit resistance mechanisms in different insects and thereby enhance the efficacy of different pyrethroid insecticides. More research is required on this particular concept to further explore it, and research is ongoing on this topic at Purdue as well as other universities. At present, however, from a perspective of giving you some kind of a recommendation for using essential oils to kill insecticide resistant bed bugs or other pests such as mosquitoes, what you can do is you can use essential oil products and pyrethroid products either in sequence or in rotation. You can also use them as tank mixes. So for example, you can mix a essential oil product and a pyrethroid product or a pyrethroid neonicotinoid combination product. But whenever you are trying to do a tank mix, I would recommend you to contact your state pesticide regulator as well as the manufacturers to see if you can effectively mix the essential oil product and the pyrethroid or neonicotinoid product. When you are combining these two products, essential oils and some other pyrethroid and neonic products, you will have a better chance to control resistant bed bug, mosquito, and perhaps house fly po populations as well. And that is based on research. So in the next section of this talk, I'm going to give you some practical tips on utilizing essential oils. And basically I'm going to tell you here what may work and what may not work when you are trying to use these products in the field. If you are trying to control different species of ants and small flies using essential oils, and if you can spray flies or ants directly with this product, then you can kill them right away. However, you are not going to get any residual kill or any long-term effect of the, with these products because as soon as they vaporize, you know, they are not going to kill any ants or flies. Some products, however, may have a long-term uh, that may last for up to one to two weeks or more residual repellency effect. For example, the work that Dr. Dan Suter and his students have done uh, almost 10 years ago or 15 years ago in the University of Georgia had shown that uh, some of the essential oils or the essential oil products may not be as effective uh, residue. They, they may not provide any residual kill, but they may have a repellent effect, keeping the ants and some other, uh, especially ants, out of uh, you know, people's homes. There may be more developments in this uh, area. So I would always recommend you to contact the manufacturers of different essential oil products to get more up-to-date information on their products. When you are trying to use essential oils for controlling different species of cockroaches, there is initial research that has been done that shows that you can formulate effective baits using essential oils but there are no products that are available in the market that PMPs can use. So we'll have to wait and see if such products become available in the near future. If you are using different products uh, for essential oil-based products for killing cockroaches, uh, you may not get any residual kill, but if you are able to directly spray a cockroach with the essential oil-based product, you may get some level of control. You can use certain products as repellents for invasive Turkestan cockroaches. This research is being done by Dr. Alvaro Romero at New Mexico State University. So his research has shown that if you can apply some essential oil products to the harborage spots for Turkestan cockroaches, such as irrigation boxes, uh, utility boxes, uh, electrical boxes, and some others where they are kind of uh, harboring, then these essential oils may be able to keep out, may be able to act as repellents to keep them out from those areas, at least for a duration or of one or two weeks. Again, I would recommend you to contact the manufacturers to determine if you can, how you can use 
different uh, essential oil products effectively for cockroach control. In terms of dry wood termites, you can use a combination of heat treatments and winter grain oil to get better efficacy or better control of dry wood termites. But unfortunately, when we are trying to control subterranean termites, we don't have any effective ways of using essential oil-based products for termite control. Maybe it can be used as a repellent, but only for a short period of time. Again, contact the manufacturers to get more up-to-date information on this. I have a high level of confidence in recommending the use of essential oil-based products, either for just bed bug control or for controlling bed bug populations that are resistant to pyrethroids. And I'm saying this based on the Rutgers study done by Dr. Changlu Wang that has shown that you can use essential oil products and if you use them within an IPM framework, then you are going to get good control of bed bugs similar to that of synthetic pesticides such as Temperate SC. The research that I have done at, at Purdue University, mostly in the lab, shows that you can use a mixture of essential oils and pyrethroids to control pyrethroid resistant bed bugs that may show as high as 70,000 fold resistant to different pyrethroid insecticides. So in this case, uh, what we are seeing, not only with bed bugs, but also other pests, is that essential oils can effectively act as synergists, similar to that of PBO and some other uh, synthetic uh, synergists, and they are able to overcome resistance. So one good thing about these two studies is that the product that we used in our study, which is EcoRadar, and now it is called as EcoVenger, is still available in the market. So there is a direct comparison between what we did in our studies and what is available in the market. So how are we recommending the use of essential oil products for bed bug control? Uh, I'm recommending its use with, within the IPM framework and if possible with other pyrethroid insecticides. So you would start with initial application of EcoVenture or some other essential oil based product. And then you would follow it up with synthetic insecticides that are shown here in this picture. Uh, uh, temperate effects, transport, tandem, and others. You can also do a co-application in separate tanks, spray tanks, and that would also work. And that is based on Rutgers research. You can mix the EcoVenger and some synthetic chemical insecticides but you'll always have to ask the state pesticide regulator as well as the manufacturer if it, you are allowed to do that, if you are allowed to do, mix a essential oil-based product along with synthetic insecticides. Again, I'm recommending the use of essential oils for bed bug control within the framework of IPM where you're using monitoring, uh, essential oil products, silicate, some other biopesticides such as Aplihen along with a lot of other uh, physical or mechanical control measures such as mattress encasements, vacuuming, steaming, and freezing. Uh, there are also certain publications that show good efficacy of essential oils against pyrethroid resistant mosquito populations. So you can also combine essential oil based pesticides that are labeled for mosquito control with some synthetic pesticides, mainly pyrethroids. So in this case, you would first do an application with essential oil product followed by a synthetic pesticides. If you are going to kind of mix the two products, the essential oils and pyrethroids, you may have to ask the manufacturers as well as the pesticide regulators about these tank mixes. They may not be uh, approved in your state. One thing I want to touch upon before I kind of conclude my talk is that the cost effectiveness of an essential oil program can be a different from a conventional pesticide-based program. And this is because essential oil products are going to cost you more when you're trying to purchase them from vendors. They are going to cost more than the synthetic chemical insecticides. Therefore, you may have to charge your customers more for using essential oil-based products. And so this kind of a green control may be suitable for customers who are willing to pay more, do more dollars. I can say right away that public housing projects who have low income or low pest control budgets may not adopt this uh, green or essential oil-based pest control approach. So again, a summary of key take-home messages. If you are trying to control cockroaches, ants, and flies, and if you can spray the essential oil-based product directly on them, you may get some 
quick kill of those pests, but you may not get any long-term residual kill. You might be able to use some essential oil-based products as repellents against certain invasive ant and cockroach species. When you can combine heat with wintergreen oil, spot treatments of wintergreen oil, you can better control the dry wood termite infestations. But right now we don't have any good ways to use essential oils for the control of Formosan termites or subterranean termites that could be more prevalent here in the Midwest region as well as the Southern United States. Existing essential oils uh, can, essential oil products can be used uh, with other chemical insecticides to achieve better or synergistically higher control of pyrethroid resistant bed bug on mosquito populations. Uh, when you are using tank mixtures, I'm saying this again and again, uh, you have to refer to your pesticide regulatory authority or manufacturers to see if you can use mixtures of essential oils and pyrethroids. If not, you can always apply them in a sequential or rotational manner. And to conclude the talks, I want to kind of give you some information on the confidence level that I have in controlling some of the different urban pests using essential oils. And this confidence level scale is based on my own experience and published research. If you are going to ask a manufacturer or PMP who has experience in using these products out in the field, their experience or their scale may vary. So the scale that I'm using, if I'm giving it one star, that means I have lowest level of confidence in controlling that particular pest group. Whereas if I'm giving five stars, I have a highest level of confidence in controlling that particular pest group with essential oils. So I have the lowest level of confidence in controlling the small fire populations with essential oils within a bed uh, IPM framework. A little higher confidence in controlling some ant and cockroach populations, especially they can, essential oils products can be useful as direct spray as well as repellents against these pests. I have even higher confidence in controlling dry wood termites and mosquito populations, maybe a three or a four star with essential oil products. And I have the highest level of confidence with which I can recommend the use of essential oils for bed bug control. With that, uh, I'll kind of uh, take any questions that you may have. Uh, we have a separate Q&A session for that. Uh, you are welcome to attend that session and also ask me different questions. But if you don't get a chance to attend that session, or if you don't get a chance to ask me a question, I have listed my email on this slide. You can always contact me and I'll be ha happy to answer your questions. So thank you for your attention and uh, I'll see you in the Q&A session. Thanks, bye.